Hi, I'm Dr. Garrett Ryan, and today I want to talk about some of the greatest Roman treasures ever discovered. Now, when I say treasure, I'm not talking about artistic masterpieces or discoveries that advance our understanding. I'm talking about gold and silver, pirate-style swag, the shiny stuff. The treasures discussed here are ranked in order of bullion value, the value, in other words, of the precious metal they contained. This method, of course, ignores artistic merit, but it does give some idea of how much a treasure was worth when it was buried. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Number 6. The Hawks and Hoard In November 1992, near the English village of Hawkson, a farmer lost his hammer in a plowed field. After a fruitless search, he asked his friend Eric Laws to help. Laws came out and walked up and down the furrows with a metal detector he had received as a retirement gift. In the middle of the field, his detector beeped. Seeing nothing on the surface, Laws stuck a spade into the ground. The first shovelful of dirt glittered with gold. Laws immediately contacted local authorities. The authorities, in turn, sent the treasure he had discovered to the British Museum. The experts there cleaned the treasure, which included gold jewelry, silver tableware, and more than 15,000 gold, silver, and bronze coins. All this had been packed into a wooden chest and buried sometime in the 5th century, when Roman Britain was collapsing under pressure from barbarian invaders. At the time of its discovery, the Hawkson Hoard was valued at £1,750,000, the equivalent of over £3.5 million today, or $5 million U.S. dollars. But how valuable, roughly speaking, was the hoard when it was buried? Using a formula devised by Dr. Richard Hobbs of the British Museum, we can determine that the bullion value of the treasure was worth the equivalent of 5.2 kilograms of gold. At the time the Hawkson Hoard was buried, foot soldiers in the Roman army earned five gold pieces a year, which seems to have been a more or less average income for the period. Since five late antique solidi contained about 22.5 grams of gold, 5.2 kilograms of gold could have paid the annual salaries of about 230 late antique soldiers. In terms of purchasing power, in short, the Hawks and Horde was worth the equivalent of millions of modern dollars. Number five, the Trier Treasure of 1628. On the 4th of December, 1628, in the German city of Trier, six Jesuit novices were digging in the garden behind their monastery, clearing a trench for the foundations of a new building. About six feet below the surface, one of the novices struck something hard. Clearing the dirt away, he discovered the lid of a stone chest. When he pried it open with the help of the other novices, he found himself staring at a vast trove of Roman silver plate. The treasure included almost 50 pieces of silverware, ranging from graceful goblets to huge and elaborately carved serving trays. It seems to have been buried during the mid-5th century, when Trier was on the front lines of the collapsing German frontier. Unfortunately, the silver was confiscated by the Prince Elector, hacked into pieces, and melted down to mint new coins. In the process, it was discovered that the Trier treasure included about 114 kilograms of pure silver. By Hobbes' formula, this was worth about as much as 7.5 kilograms of gold at the time it was buried. That much gold could have paid the annual salaries of 330 late antique soldiers. Number 4. The Boscoriale Treasure Vesuvius had awoken. Just outside Pompeii, a fine rain of ash was falling on the villa. As earthquakes shook the walls and the sky turned to pitch, the villa's owner ordered a chest of valuables to be buried beneath the floor of the wine pressing room. We don't know whether the owner escaped in time. A skeleton was discovered nearby, but he or she never returned to claim the treasure. When it was rediscovered in 1895, the treasure was found to include 102 pieces of silver, many, like the plate in this image, artistic masterpieces. Some of the silverware was already centuries old by the time it was buried. With the silverware were discovered more than 1,000 golden aurei. The intense heat of the eruption had tinted the metal, 
giving each coin a beautiful reddish patina. Most of the Bascoriale treasure was quickly smuggled out of Italy and onto the international antiquities market. The best of the silverware was purchased by the financier Edmund de Rothschild, who gave it to the Louvre. Other pieces ended up in the British Museum. The coins are mostly in private collections. The Bascoriale treasure contained about 9 kilograms of gold coins and 30 kilograms of silver. By Hobbes' formula, the entire treasure was worth about as much as 11 kilograms of gold when it was buried. At that time, Roman legionaries were paid 225 denarii a year, the equivalent of 9 arii, or 65 grams of gold. Early imperial legionaries, you'll notice, were paid much better than their late antique descendants. By this equation, the Bascoriale treasure could have paid the annual salaries of 170 early imperial legionaries, or nearly 500 late antique soldiers. Number 3. The Trier Gold Hoard On the afternoon of September 9, 1993, amateur coin hunters found a few gold pieces in the foundation hole of a new parking garage near the center of Trier. That evening, one of the coin hunters, Eric Aixner, returned to the foundation hole, curious to see whether more coins might be waiting in the dirt. Among the rubble of broken stone walls, in what was later determined to be the basement of a Roman administrative building, his metal detector began beeping like mad. Earlier that afternoon, a tractor had torn the top off a bronze cauldron filled with gold coins. A few of the coins had fallen into the foundation hole, but the majority were still there, beside the bottom half of the cauldron. Taking up a huge lump of coins that had fused into a mass and scooping the rest into a plastic bag, Aixner brought the treasure home. The next morning, he notified the local museum. The Trier hoard consisted of about 2,650 early imperial aurei, likely hidden by a Roman official during a civil war at the end of the 3rd century. The coins weigh a total of 18.5 kilograms. At the time of their burial, Roman legionaries were paid 12 aurei a year. The Trier hoard could thus have paid the annual salaries of 220 mid-imperial legionaries, or 822 late antique soldiers. Number 2. The Recca Devnia Hoard On November 10, 1929, in Recca Devnia, a Bulgarian village built over the ruins of the Roman city of Marcianopolis, a man digging in his backyard discovered two large vases filled with silver coins. The local authorities were notified, eventually. But by the time they arrived on the scene, almost a quarter of the coins had been sold off, many to foreign collectors. The remaining coins were packed into seven crates and shipped to museums for study. Even after the enthusiastic plunder of the most valuable types, there were over 81,000 coins in the hoard, all silver denarii hidden in a cellar during the Great Gothic Invasion of 250. The original hoard must have included well over 100,000 denarii, with a total weight of about 350 kilograms. This had a value equivalent to 23 kilograms of gold, which could have paid the annual salaries of more than a thousand late antique soldiers. In case you're wondering, by the way, the Recca Devnia hoard was not the largest hoard of Roman coins ever discovered. That honor belongs to a hoard found in 1913 near the Croatian village of Komen, which included an incredible 300,000 coins. Almost all of these, however, were debased issues of the mid-third century, much less valuable than the denarii of the Rekadevnia hoard. Number 1. The Brescello Hoard In 1714, a peasant plowing a field near the northern Italian town of Brescello, Roman Brixellum, discovered a large vessel. It contained what was almost certainly the contents of an army's pay chest, buried by some general during the civil wars that followed the death of Julius Caesar. An incredible 80,000 aurei were found inside, more than two-thirds of a ton of gold. If a treasure this size had been found in the 20th century, it would have become international news, and would now be the highlight of a regional museum. But it was found in the 18th century, and so, after a few coins were dispersed into noble collections, the vast bulk of the treasure was melted down and minted into ducats. At the time of the Brescello treasure's burial, 
legionaries received a salary equivalent to nine aurei. The 80,000 or so aurei of the treasure could thus have supported nearly 9,000 legionaries, almost two full legions for a year. To return to our favorite standard of comparison, the 650 kilograms of pure gold that those aurei contained could have paid the salaries of almost 30,000 late antique soldiers, a very respectable army. And on the modern antiquities market, of course, 80,000 late Republican aurei would be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I plan to make a video about Roman money in the near future, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. Finally, I'd be remiss if I failed to mention my forthcoming book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, which makes abundant reference to ancient treasure. So, tune in next time, and as always, thanks for watching.